Welcome back to the MSNB Network's Week in Review. I'm Christopher, and this is the show where we talk about all the events that are shaping your internet world. Today, we're talking about why Bruce Willis might be suing Apple, changes to state law that will affect every Californian who shops online, and we're taking a look towards the future as Windows XP reaches its end of life. When you purchase music or movies and whatnot through iTunes, who really owns that content, and what are you allowed to do with it? Well, according to the end user license agreement, which you clicked on when you installed iTunes and every time they update it, you actually don't own any of that stuff you paid for. You don't have a lot of rights to it. You can't resell it. You can't give it to friends, that kind of thing. Mainly because that license says you are leasing it, you're renting it, you're borrowing it from Apple. Well, recently, Bruce Willis, who wanted to uh, put his iTunes library valued at a couple thousand dollars into his will, he ran into legal trouble because Apple told him, well, you actually don't own any of that content you paid us for, so you can't transfer it to your daughters when you die. Well, he's engaging in a legal battle to, uh, to ensure that Apple is going to be able to give him the rights he thought he paid for, the idea that he could transfer his music to someone else. Well, a lot of people think that this is just an iTunes-specific problem, or I don't have to worry about that, I buy CDs at the mall, that kind of thing. Well, unfortunately, Retailers, both online and in brick-and-mortar stores, have, uh, have increasingly been putting in contracts, legalese, and so forth that say you actually don't own the material you're buying. You're owning the right to use it, which is basically just renting. And that really limits what you're able to do. It means you can't sell your, uh, your discs back to a, uh, a used disc store. You can't resell your games to GameStop. You really can't do a lot with it because, in theory, you don't own it. Well, the Internet has been abuzz with, uh, with all kinds of conversation about who owns it and whether this is right and whether you can sign away those rights uh, for years now. But the fact that a big Hollywood icon like Bruce Willis is shining light on the fact that you don't own any of this content that you've paid for, which is a huge uh, 180 from where music and media have been for the past 70 years. Hopefully, we're going to see a lot more press, and hopefully, if he's victorious, we're going to see a lot of that fine print changed, so that when you click that button and you download that song and you purchase it, it's yours. You're able to do what you want with it under all the copyright law that, uh, that we have in existence. So... Kudos to you, Bruce Willis, and we hope you're successful, and we really look forward to following this one in the papers. Online retailers like Amazon.com are seeing a huge surge of business from Californians hoping to avoid paying sales tax. Well, as of September 15th, that's not going to be the case anymore because state legislature has mandated that online retailers like Amazon.com and others have to include California state sales tax when selling to residents. Well, a lot of people trying to, to get out of, uh, of paying that are using this week as an excuse to buy all those big ticket items such as big electronics or even furniture delivered to their home to hopefully avoid paying that tax. State law mandates, however, that if we aren't paying tax on internet purchases that we add those taxes that we should have paid onto our state filing uh, in April. But I don't know a single person who's ever done that. Well, the state is in such a deficit that it's hoping that these new online taxes are really going to help turn things around. It's hoping that over the next year, it's going to get over $320 million just from taxes on online sales, including $80 million just from Amazon.com. Well, if you're going to make purchases, remember, you got to pay your taxes, but if you do it before September 15th, it's on the honor system. Internet researchers, for the first time, have discovered that Windows 7 has finally become the most popular operating system online just now beating out Windows XP, which even after 10 years is still going strong with more than 40% of the computers online. This is big news, not only because it marks a, a growing shift towards people moving to a more secure, more stable, more uh, feature-rich operating system, but it also means that there are 40% of the world out there still using a 10-year-old operating system, which is a credit to its longevity and its usability. Unfortunately, these days, the only updates provided for Windows XP are security updates, patching holes and fixes, and Microsoft actually doesn't have a very big team working on taking care of Windows XP. All of their efforts are on Windows 7 and their upcoming Windows 8. Well, in fact, they've even put in the, uh, the sunset date for Windows XP, after which there will be no more updates, including security, and that's going to be April 8th, 2014. This date is particularly important to our business clients and friends, mainly because 
Even today, with so much of the market share being Windows XP, there are a lot of sophisticated attacks that keep coming out that are more developed, that are more advanced than anything we've seen before, all targeted at Windows XP. Well, after next April, there's not going to be any security updates anymore. There's not going to be any patches released anymore, meaning your computer is going to be completely vulnerable. Microsoft has announced that this uh, date is coming up about a, two years, three years in advance, making sure people have plenty of time to update. They're hoping that people are going to upgrade to Windows 8. For now, personally, I say Windows 7 is doing just fine with all the content and uh, usability patches that are coming through, the wide range of hardware it supports. It's actually a very stable operating system, a far cry from when it started. Then again, about five, six years ago, I said the same thing about Windows XP. It came, uh, came out a little slowly, but its usability has been second to none, and here we are still using it 10 years later. Are we going to say the same thing about Windows 7? Who knows? But for businesses and consumers, it's the smart and secure choice moving forward. That about wraps up this week in review. I'm Christopher for MSNB Networks, and we want to thank you for watching this, our channel, where we bring you the latest news about what's affecting your internet world. Please feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons and to share this video with your friends. If you have any comments or questions, put them down below near the video description where we've included links to all the stories that we presented today. Again, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. We are MSNB Networks, managing systems for managing business. Like us on Facebook, join us on Twitter, and of course, subscribe to this, our new YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.